to Pink Cheesecake Podcast, the musings on the pursuit of a happier life. Hi, Madison. Hi, Stacy. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Daughter. <laughs> yes, welcome. Um, so episode number five was about parenting. Yes. So go back if you want to learn a little bit more about Stacy's, <laughs> my mom's parenting. Uh, Top notch <laughs> parenting material. <laughs> you may find yourself inspired to make your own parenting pamphlet. And it's just part one because I think you have a little bit more to say in part yeah. two. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And we're on episode six and this is kind of your driving the bus a on little this bit. Episode. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Tell me what we're doing today. So I wanted to share a little bit more of what I'm learning in my Yale class. We're on week five. Um, and uh, we're kind of in the last couple episodes that we were discussing my class, um, we were talking about things that don't bring us as much joy as we think they will. Like they don't, they aren't as, um, yeah, they just don't bring us as much happiness as they think they will um, because of certain things like our minds um, are usually wrong. They usually, our intuitions are usually wrong about what we want and what would make us happy. And, um, and we don't really know why that is. It's just kind of the way our brains work. Okay. And, um, so we talked a little bit about combating that and how we can find happiness. Yes. In a small thing, savoring, things like that. Being thankful, grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Comparison um, points. Yes. Changing your reference points from your next door neighbor to actually truly what are your reference points for your life? Um, kind of setting expectations maybe a little bit more realistically, but also um, setting your reference points to truly who you are, like a little bit of self- um, Awareness. A little bit of self-awareness. What's the other word? Um, well, and your experiences. Yeah, or like getting down to the, the true self of who you are. I think right. that's really important. Um, and sometimes we lose that in comparisons to right. our life. Yes, Depending yes. on who we're hanging out with, right. who we're around, um, How do we want to spend our money? How do we want to spend our time? So this week um, in the class and what I want to share with you is some strategies of better wanting and ways we can want the things that will actually truly make us happy. Okay. In the past, we talked about- Better wanting. That's the the term, better wanting. Okay. So instead of wanting things that we won't want, how do we practice better wanting? So and what does that look like? Me. Never heard that. What does that look like? Before. So, um, there, better wanting. There's two different steps that I learned about. The first step is wanting the right parts of what we already have. Step two is wanting better stuff that we didn't know we want yet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So the first part, um, a little bit, is wanting the right parts of. Um, what is it? Wanting the right parts of what we already have. Wanting the right parts of, of what, what we, we already, already have. have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because sometimes we have what we have and we're not necessarily as grateful for them or we don't think they're bringing us as much happiness as they actually are. Okay. So this was so cool Ooh, to me. Interesting. Um, okay. Number one is finding flow. Okay. So flow is a term that we use when we, um, I guess this is what it's defined as. And it'll make sense in a second. The mental state in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment. In other words, the zone, right? Wow. Or when you get lost in time, you lose track of time while you're enjoying that activity or doing whatever you're doing. I had no idea the definition of flow. Well, well, it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. We just throw that word around. Yeah. Are you, were you in the flow? Were you in the zone? Were you? Wow. And okay. I think a lot of um, athletes, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> but right. We just established we're not athletes. Yeah. Right. But when you're playing a sport, you're Yoga. in the zone, right? If anybody has ever played a basketball game or, or you know, you're They're in their sweet spot. Yeah. And brains. then you don't know, you're not really focusing on the time. You're just enjoying it. Um, and I, and I can say that as a musician, I have had that many times, many days we talked about, I would play the piano for hours and hours and hours. Um, and I would lose track of time. I wouldn't right. eat. I wouldn't need to go to the bathroom. I wouldn't, yeah. I would just like, Oh, all of a sudden two hours went by. Um, and, uh, what was interesting to me is I immediately thought of my job. I am so blessed with a job that um, I get to experience flow. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of why I experienced that in my job. Because I think normally jobs, you don't get to experience that. No. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to tell you why my job, okay. I get to. Um, 
And I guess maybe even in teaching piano, you get a little bit of that too. Well, you're teaching because that's part oh, of I'm your gifting. Oh, I'm excited to talk about this. Yeah. So the features of flow are this. So now as you listen to this, you can kind of think of your own life and maybe imagine a little bit of um, where this fits in or maybe where yeah. you've experienced it. Uh, features of flow. Um, the activity is challenging, but attainable. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's not stressful. But it's a challenging enough that you are not bored. Yeah, it keeps your interest. Yeah. Um, you have strong focus and concentration. The activity is intrinsically rewarding, mm. meaning you're not doing it for a good grade, you're not doing it for praise, and you're not doing it for an award. For right? The pure, just pure act of just doing it. Right. Okay. Um, feelings of serenity. Lost, lose track of time, complex focus on the activity itself. And then of course, lack of awareness of physical needs. Like I talked about, like needing to go to the bathroom or right. something yeah. out the window. Right. Okay. Um, so the, the kind of formula of attaining that, um, if you can imagine a graph, I need a whiteboard. Okay. I have become wow. a Yale professor. You okay. need a, a stick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on one side, <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. know what that's called actually. <laughs> a um, pointer. A pointer. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so on one side of the graph, we have a low to high, right? Okay. okay. The other side, the low, the low graph. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good at this. No, this is, this is fascinating. So to attain flow, the challenge has to be high. But then on the bottom is your skill has to meet that challenge. Yes. Okay. So imagine, and it's meeting right up in the corner uh -huh. there. So if, uh -huh. if your challenge is low and your skill is low, or if your challenge is low and your skill is high, what are you? You're bored, right? Uh, because yeah. you're like, I'm made for more. I can do more. This uh, is boring to yeah. me. Yeah. Then too again, easy. if your challenge is too high and your skill is too low, you're anxious and you're nervous Can't and you're frustrated, yeah. right? Um, where you meet is where the challenge is high and your skill can meet that challenge. That's where that's high. Okay. Nice. So it's just challenging enough. So I have found that I remember when I was, um, I had been taking piano lessons for five years at the time or something like that. It was about the time where it got hard because oh. piano was something that came naturally to me. And then right when it got really hard, I remember sitting at the piano and going, I am done. I don't want to do it anymore. Why would I, why? It's hard. Mm. It's hard now. Why do I want to do this? Then I thought, okay, no. You kind of didn't give me a choice though because it was one of those I things. I didn't give you a choice? No, and I never really officially brought to you a thing that said, okay, I don't I want to quit. I think I remembered that, yeah. I, it was just kind of internal, but- I remember thinking like, I don't really, if it's going to be hard, then it's not worth okay. it. Like it's just, it's supposed to be fun. Right. And, um, but then my skill met that challenge because you kept, I just practicing. kept practicing. Yeah. Um, so in a way like, yeah, uh, that was my anxious point. I knew that my skill had to meet this challenge. How do I, how do I make wow. that happen? And I just kept practicing and practicing. Um, but in a way I have that in my job because, um, it is, there are certain parts of my job that are boring because it, there's, it's kind of easy, yeah. but every once in a while they're sprinkled in these stressful moments where I actually do have to think really hard and I have to problem solve and I have to do quick math and I have to communicate this in a, in a way that a doctor is going to understand what I'm saying, or my coworker is going to understand what I'm saying. Um, but my, but my skill meets that. Yeah. Because I've been practicing my job You've and I've been, been training. training for the job. Yep. And so that's when I, I'm just in, I'm in the zone. Wow. You're just in the flow and all of a sudden an hour goes by or 20 minutes goes by and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. How, do you, have you experienced, do you know, I don't know, a little bit of, have you experienced um, that in your life? Maybe? I, yeah. I, I guess lots of times. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, I guess the first thing I'm thinking of is socially. <gasps> yeah. I, you know, I'm not yeah. thinking of this as a job. Okay, I'm okay. thinking of when I'm, okay. and maybe this doesn't fit. So fix this if, if this isn't right. Okay. But I'm thinking okay. about being in a group of women or friends, or even when dad and I did stuff with couples. I mean, you could lose all track of time visiting with people that you love, mm. have lots of things in common, um, 
definitely feel like the conversation is flowing, the food is flowing, time is flowing. We have no conflicts. We have no challenges with one another. We're interesting enough where it's not boring. Yeah. So did I switch that? A little bit. That's, I think, I know. I think it's a different form of flow. Because. Because I wouldn't, would the, is it, cha- was that challenging Well, of course you? it well, it was challenging enough because you're dealing with people. Well, not only that, so but you're in- having conversation. And I think conversation in itself can be a ch- that you challenge each other, right? All the t- a different perspective, a different opinion. It's not arguing or like disagreeing. You're just like, well, that's what keeps the spark. That's yeah. what keeps it interesting. I different think that's stories, why different perspectives. Yeah. You don't maintain friendships with people that are. Uh, Abby, my friend, boring, and I were just talking about this. I- we're just talking about this because she asked me a question. <laughs> She said, oh, I don't remember the question now. And I answered her. The answer was this. It was, yep, that was the answer, okay? okay. To her question was yes. But instead, I went on for about <laughs> 60 seconds. So surprised. A bit, and I told her the before I, the experience, the, the why <laughs> of the experience, the effects of the experience, oh my, my emotions regarding the experience. Oh and then I go, why am I like this? My answer is yes. <laughs> and she goes, she just laughed and she goes, cause we're like this. She said, well, if I didn't want to know those things, I wouldn't have asked you the question. Aww. You know, she said, she said, what kind of cool, what kind of conversation is that when you just say yes, Aww. you know, yeah. so that way she could say, Oh, um, regarding your emotions, I experienced something like that too. And that's how you have a conversation. And I think that as we're talking, both of us are highly social. Yeah. Highly we're very, people. Yeah, 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 people. yeah, yeah. So when you're talking about this challenge and ease and this flow, you know, things are going through my mind like um, crocheting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I don't craft. Yeah. I would not pick up a crochet needle. But do you think that some people experience that when they... Well, I know people yeah. who love to or like crochet painting and, or, or do any of those crafty yeah. things. Exercise. Yeah, all well, that stuff. Yeah. Well, that's a different. Oh. I'm talking about, I think it's a little bit different crafting okay. and exercising. But that, no, okay. Um, but, but maybe they're not. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Okay. So immediately I'm like, nope, my skill level is no. I would quit. Okay. Would so quit. we're going to talk about that. We're oh. going to talk about that. Okay. So I'm going to keep this focus on socially. Okay. My graph. So- Okay, go. This is my next point in this, um, with the better wanting. Better wanting. If you, Ugh. if you, it, like, we don't, we don't strive for moments in our life where we experience flow. If you had an option, like me, okay, you tell me, hey, Madison, do you want to stay at home all day or would you rather go to work, right? Okay. Uh, most of us would say, stay home. I'll have a day right, off. Right, right, right. I'll okay. go do, do whatever I want to do. Do whatever. Do. Bum around, <laughs> right? Bum around. Um, but being in the flow makes you happier. Evidence shows that it well, is, improves your mood. It actually builds brain matter. Like it builds your brain differently. Also meditation, but we'll get to that. Um, when you are in, when you're kind of in that zone. But don't, yeah, but don't you think being in that zone, in the flow, yes, and you talked about brain matter, I'm thinking all of those feel good chemical, oh my chemical gosh. releases are yeah. just flooding your brain but with serotonin. But what I'm saying is like, I don't think people realize that. I, I think that if you ask the normal oh. person, would they say they'd rather go to work or stay home? No. But like, yeah. would you, would you, yeah, I yeah. don't know. We just oh, don't always, we don't, wanting. we don't always want that for ourselves. Right. Because they're, okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. And then a little bit on your mindset. So we're talking about growth mindset and fixed mindsets. I think there's two different kinds of mindsets okay. that people are I guess maybe born with, but again, you can change. Yes. We're all about growing. Yeah. Finding our happier life. Pursue, pursuing that. Yes. So the growth mindset is the belief that intelligence can be trained and that the most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Okay. Okay. If you have a fixed mindset, you have the belief that basic qualities of intelligence and talent are fixed traits. You're just born with it. Right. So a little bit of when I was practicing the piano and I thought, oh, I'm, and I was told, you're born with this. This is, you, you're uh, so good at this. You're, it's so natural to you. And then the minute it got hard, I thought, well, it must not be that natural. I guess I'm not good at it. Oh. But I had to change my mindset from, um, no, I can work hard. And then there's actually a real outcome from this. And I can be wow. better at it. 
So I changed okay. my mindset of a na- this is a natural ability to, no, I work hard for this ability. Hmm. It changed. It changed wow. halfway through to me. Wow. So I think a lot of that is um, lear- learning how to do anything new. If you okay. just quit halfway through and go, oh, can't do it, I guess. Well, you can research anything. You can learn anything. You can read anything. But you have to want to. Yes, exactly. Because and that's changing your mindset. That's changing the mindset. Yeah. I need huge motivation to want to do something hard. Yeah. I mean, don't we all? So I think, I think you do have a little bit of fixed mindset because if you have a fixed mindset, you focus on the, you focus on the grade. You focus on the, the outcome. You focus on the motivation. Like, um... Like okay, if up. I have to work, I'm not good enough or the performance comes, the performance okay. has to come naturally. It, it, um, yeah. Okay. So a question. So, um, I, I'm not good at crafts. Okay. I'm just not. And that's a fixed mindset. I, I hate them. I think I'm really bad at them. I don't enjoy doing them. Mm-hmm. Okay. But are you saying that I could change my mindset? Could I enjoy the process? process and not the final outcome. Yeah. So the growth mindset focuses on the learning and it focuses on that, the performance of your okay. craft. It takes work, so right? I'm sort of interested in watercolors. Let's pretend okay. yep. I wanted to start a new hobby yep. and it was art. Let's say I had no choice. Okay. Stacey Lee, here's okay. I would pick watercolors. Okay. And if somebody was teaching me watercolors, would I be able to learn how to enjoy doing that and then not worry about my outcome of what my picture looked like at the end? Um, I, this is a little bit of a, I don't know. This is, is that too hard? Well, I, I don't know. Like, I think it's more so you kind of have to, like with your mindsets, you kind of do have to like desire what you're doing. Desire what I'm doing. You know, okay, not just the process of doing. I think that, um, but I think you're right. You can find that. Like if, if when you're in school and you have to take your geometry class, right? Okay. You're not going to focus on, oh, I'm so bad at geometry. I'm going to get a bad grade. This is terrible. Okay. I hate this. Okay. To fix your mindset, you're going to go, I only have to do it for a little bit of time. Let's enjoy the process. Let's really figure out how far my brain can go. Oh, okay. You know, oh. and then just you feel that self pride okay. in knowing, I think I can do this. Even if I don't get an A, I might be able to get a C. Do you know how brave that is? That's a really brave thing you have to decide. Really brave? Yes. yes. Because I think a lot of us in our fixed mindset, yeah. we're pretty comfortable in this groove. Right. I mean, we're dug that ditch right. deep. Right. I, but, but having you talk to me about it kind of excites me a little bit. And like, evidence shows that having a growth mindset will make you happier, especially we don't talk intrinsically. About this. No, no, nobody we don't. talks about we don't. this because there's too many um, variables. Well, no, there's too many things to do in the world. There so are t- <laughs> if you don't want to do it, you know, do. it's like horseback ride or learn yeah. how to shear a sheep right. or like, the, yeah. yeah. I think back then you had two things that you had to do. And if you weren't good at them, you were screwed. <laughs> two things, okay. um, but like now. Cook a meal or build a house. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, but now oh. we can decide what our hobbies are or what we want to study and it things is like that. unlimited. And so we just decide, oh, nope, oh, nope. And then you kind of get the boredom in a way because then you're not being challenged. You're not challenging yourself. Oh. If you are in that growth mindset. But that's where I say it level, takes bravery to challenge yourself. Okay. Because it's risk of failing. <laughs> what? I think that's so funny. Why? I love the challenge of it. Like I'm, I just decide I won't fail, and then <laughs> that's so confident. I'm, I, I'm not but that then if confident. I, if I do fail, I never, I never say it's a fail. Like it's never a fail because <laughs> you just switch it up. Well, I just keep keep trying. Then if I if I really wow. want to, or if I didn't. If I did fail and then I changed my mind and like trying, then it's just like, I changed my mind. I didn't want to do it. That's like, such, such a self-protectiveness. I think it is. That's I think beautiful. I just don't take on the failure. Like I just that's go, fantastic. I just go, well, if I failed, then it wasn't meant to be like, okay. Madison, that's huge. Really? Oh my gosh. People who fail will go into a shame spiral, go hide <laughs> out for a week, so never want to pick up a, a, a paintbrush or a hammer or oh, a, yeah, or no, a that does spoon not, again that does to make a cake. That does not go well for me. I do not do that. That's, I can't do that. Th- I think that's really 
rare. Oh. I mean, that shows great confidence. Oh, wow. Okay. And and strength of character. Oh my gosh. Okay. Because <laughs> if I if I make a cake and I burn it, I never again will bake a cake. Okay. Just to keep me real, I have had an experience. Okay. <laughs> keep you humble. Okay. Cooking and baking are about as low on the skill set for me as you can well, possibly get. Of I can I'm sorry. do like anything else in the world that I put my I mind to, but sorry. cooking and baking. And I was I, learning about this and we have so much more to go over has really changed a little, like it's made me think a lot about, um, cooking and baking because okay. now I want to like change up my meal plans and stuff. And I'm wondering why I don't. So I'm trying to like open up. Why do I not enjoy this? Like what about well, it is not- unfortunately. And I think a lot of it, no, because I think what you're going to say is a fixed okay. mind. It's okay. just the way you're born. No, because of I imprinted on you. No, I don't think it's that either. Okay, good. Because I good. don't want to put, I'm not putting that on someone. Okay. okay. I think, oh, I think it's my, <laughs> it wasn't no, I, my fault. It's not. Great. But I think a lot of it has to do with, um, like the way, and I haven't finished the thought completely because when you have a three-year-old around you all the time, yeah. you can't really finish a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Um, but, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm not in the zone. Like I don't have the flow. I'm, I am very like type a, that everything has to be perfect. Yeah. And in cooking and baking, you can't be like no. that. Um, I like to have solid facts and solid grounds yes, and this is do. the way it is. You don't and like variables very much. No. And I don't like to like set a timer and this oven doesn't cook the same way that oven does. And then this, part. like, I just, I can't do it. Okay. So I don't get lost in that because, okay. I, yeah. But am I a growth mindset person? Yes. Yeah. And so I am going, the challenge is very high. So I'm going to make my skill meet that challenge. Okay. So You're going to train gonna keep for working it. At it. I'm just going to keep working at it. But anyway, one time I wow. was trying to make Mike snicker or uh, scotcheroos and we were dating <laughs> and his mom made scotcheroos and they were really good. And so I was like, what okay, are Mike, scotcheroos? Oh, they're, they're like the peanut butter rice crispy with the chocolate on top. Okay. Oh my God. They're so good. I don't even like treats and like, I love those. Okay. So I was like, okay, I can make it, but they're really tedious. You have to like melt the butter and all that stuff at a certain, I made it three times. Wow. And I burst into tears because <laughs> I couldn't make it. I messed it up every time. Aww, and we took like- scotch a roof fail. We took it like two trips to hy V that night to like redo it. And Mike was like, it's okay. And I was like, I can't make you scotch a roof. Like I was just a disaster. <laughs> um, and he was like, it's fine. <laughs> Like it's fine. And I was like, no, it's not. But yeah, that was the one that wow. I really took on that failure. And I honestly haven't See tried since. How I'm so, okay, I you know have there have been be times. There have been times. Yeah, really yeah. brave. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. and confident. Yeah, in it's yourself. not always that. No. Um, so the next thing is number two is wanting things that we don't think we want. Oh, and I'm yeah. going to try to go through it quickly because okay. there are lots of um, okay. studies that we talked about in the class that I'm probably going to describe really poorly. Um, oh. But just trust me on the evidence is there. <laughs> oh, no, I believe you. Um, yeah. And a lot of these uh, Yale professors um, have gotten grants to actually do this stuff. And they do, they kind of do it on their own as well because they're small um, acts of kindness. So number one is kindness. Okay. Search for ways to um, be kind, um, do random acts of kindness, but also appreciate others' kindness. Look for it in mm. your life. What they did is they took um, a bunch of people and they uh, they surveyed and um, wrote down their baseline happiness. They just asked random people, what do you think, how happy are you? They wrote them down and they found that the happiest people, now this is not, this is literally just asking people how happy they think they are. What they found is the people who themselves decided that they were happy, thought they were happy, were um, kinder than people who weren't. And this, mm. isn't, this isn't going off of what they noticed, um, like the people saying, oh, I do random acts of kindness, that's why. But what they noticed is through their stories and through interviewing them, the people appreciated acts of kindness. Mm. Instead of saying, when was the last time someone did something kind for you? A lot of people can't really think about that necessarily. They don't remember. We don't or recognize when was, it? A, 
people maybe who aren't as happy. They don't really oh. recognize it. Oh, right. That's what right, I'm right, 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 right. Okay, well, I'm they want to be sad. They want to be sorrowful. Maybe. They or, don't yeah. So they're not, they're not recognizing the, Recognizing the goodness when it comes into their lives. So the kindness. Right. And then I get that. not only that, but they're not then acting out an act of kindness for right. someone. They're not searching that out. Um, so if you want to experience more happiness in your life, search kindness. <laughs> Seek kindness in your life, whether it's you or you're noticing it from other people. Okay. Um, another thing, they measured people's happiness. Like I said before, they did. But instead this time, and I think they did this with college students, they gave them $5 or $20. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't really matter the amount. It kind of does. But let's just say I gave you $20, right? And they did this for a bunch of kids. And they said to one group, you need to spend this money on somebody else. The next group, they said, you need to spend it on yourself. Yep. I'm going to check back in with you today, this week, next month, and then I'm going to measure your happiness again. Right. So what they did that, and what they found was that the people who chose to, or they told them to use money on someone else, yep. were intrinsically happier yes. than the people who spent it I on have, themselves. I have actually heard of this. Yeah. And, um, and it didn't matter the amount of money. It didn't matter if it was right. the $20 or $5. Because right. that's, that's the other thing they were trying to decide is, did it matter how much money? It didn't. It Mm-mm. just mattered that they gave yeah. um, or they chose to spend their money on someone else. So again, better wanting. We don't think about that. If right. I gave you money, you'd say, oh, I'm right. going to go get myself a cup of coffee. Right. Or, oh, I'm going to save this away for my next yeah. whatever. Um, it doesn't really make you as happy as actually giving that to somebody else. Well, I know that when I can give money to my adult children, yeah, it makes me very, very happy. Yeah, Because I... I and I know not every parent can say that about their young adult children. Um, but I am blessed that my young adult children are really hard workers. You and your brothers yeah, yeah, are yeah, very are. <laughs> hard workers. You deserve everything that you work for and more. Yeah. So if there's anything that you guys ever need or want, and that's something I can do for you, oh, I, it's my pleasure to give to you. So and I in another way, I love, it. love buying people coffee. <laughs> Like, <laughs> well, because coffee is your love language too. Well, but, no, but yeah. just like if I'm doing something and I want to share that with somebody yeah. else. Um, and like I was going through the drive through and one of my coworkers passed me on the road and she goes, she called me. She goes, I see you in the drive through. I see you. What are you getting me? I was so excited. I was like, oh, okay, what do you want? I get to buy you coffee. And it was oh, like exciting cute. to me that I get to go meet her. Here's your cup. You know, I just, Aww, I, and we, I, I well, love you that. created an experience. Yes, absolutely. There's an and a connection and a memory with another human mm-hmm. and a story and a story. There's a lot of levels yep, yep, to it. Yep, yep, many, many levels. So, um, there you go. I love Seek it. Seek kindness. Um, and then, oh gosh, there's another thing. But there's a uh, Dr. Dunn. She's a professor of psychology at Yale, and she is the co-author of um, Happy Money: The Science of Happier hmm. Spending. Okay. And it's just basically she goes on and on and on about that. Um, I'm probably not going to go on and on about it okay. because we don't have very much time. Um, but oh, she did say charitable giving. So about that was uh, charitable giving, no matter how much money you have. Now there is a mm. point where yes. Money, she even said, she says, money can buy happiness to an extent. You yes. and I both know this. Yes, we, we do. We, yeah. we are stressed. We don't feel comfortable. Right. We are it's scary. on edge. It's mm-hmm. scary. It's yep. anxious. Survival. So if yep. you are in a survival mm-hmm. poverty level yes. money, it is absolutely $1,000 can buy you quite a bit of happiness. Absolutely, right? positively. At a certain point of your salary, yep. it does plateau. And we yes. talked about that. Um, but- and I think you and I have both, like you even said that you, you, if you are able, even if you aren't able, even if I'm not able and you give money, whether yes. it's tithing or to someone yep. else or just a charitable gift, you are so much happier. Yes. It really does yes. make you happier. Yes. Um, and then she talked about charitable giving overseas to things you can't see versus charitable giving on, you know, your neighborhood yeah. um, or your friend. Yeah. And she said either one but um, is equal 
Although giving to where you can see the yeah. outcome really does make a difference. Do you remember because- when I, when you guys yeah. first started working and yeah. we did the envelope system and yeah. you put, you know, 10% to give away 20 to say whatever the percentages were. And I told you guys very early, give your money close, Mm -hmm. give your money in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Sending it far, far away means there's so many hands Mm -hmm. then that touch that money, maybe doesn't get to the the root of and not the charity. Really anything wrong with that? No, 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 no. Everybody has do. their own passion. Yeah. But yeah. for our situation, I wanted you guys to give close. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's definitely so something to be said about that. See, yeah, yeah. In your community, neighborhood, or just even giving it to a family yeah. or whatever it was. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So number one was kindness. Number two, we're gonna switch gears to social connection, okay. which I think we can all know. We all know that. We all understand that being in social connection and um, Even being in the close relationship. Introverts that we know, it matters. It does. Yeah. Um. Happy happy people versus un- very unhappy people. Um. Usually happier people have closer friends, they have strong family ties, strong romantic ties, and they spend more time with others. Right. Um, meaning, meaningful social connection brings much more happiness than sitting in silence and in solitude. Um, <laughs> yes. Which is so, but again, like I have an introverted husband who would argue that, but then I would argue it back. And I would say, you are happier when you are with people you truly, truly love. Yes. You really are. You would rather be that we way. We are built for community. Yes. We are not introverts. Absolutely. You need to take your alone time. Right. To recharge. But but if you stay in that solitude, it does, it gets a little, well, it can get distorted. It can get you very distorted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what they did, I think it was Dr. Epley and I think he works in Chicago. So he takes the bus or the, whatever the train, Mm -hmm. I don't know. (laughs) Chicago. It's okay. I'm from the Metra. Yeah. I've been on the Chicago Metro train. Yeah. Okay. Not so that he that's takes a brag. That in- <laughs> I'm sure like hundreds of you have been. Okay. Whatever. So he takes the train into work about an hour commute every day and night, yeah. which is crazy. But he said that um, he wanted, he said, he said every single day, he goes, I'm studying that social connection and conversation makes people happier, but we don't know that we don't want, we don't want that when we're on the bus. What are we doing? Scroll, 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 uh, scroll. Read, 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 read. Ignore, ignore, ignore. Oh, hey. Mm-hmm. We don't. But that's, but you know why we do that. We're fearful of other people. Right. We're so, scared to death that somebody's going to look at us cross-eyed or. Oh, I'm not scared of that. Well, I'm not really either, but, but in general, but this is what are. he did. He okay. did a bunch of these. And if you really, like, it's so fascinating. Okay. I will try to get the link or something because I'm not going to explain it very well. But he surveyed. Um, he actually like paid people to do this, um, was just smiling. Yeah. People. Just, well, we're and weird And see what like happens, that. right? Mm-hmm. Talk to, yeah, I know yeah. we do it. We over smile to people. It's bad. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, no, this, I remember when I was a child and I, we grew up in a small town and so we usually smiled at people or we knew people. We didn't really go any place where we didn't know no, somebody. Cause right? our town was pretty small. Yeah. So then when we started growing up and I started going places that I didn't know people, I would still catch myself smiling at them. Yeah. And then I noticed people didn't really do that. (laughs) And I thought, okay, I think maybe I shouldn't do that then. And then I thought, why the heck not? As a child, I thought, I thought you're a human and I'm a human. Okay. And I, a smile in a way is recognizing that you're another human and we are in the same place. I just thought, why wouldn't you do that? Right. What? Yeah. What bad could happen? Yeah. For, and it's it's almost respectful. Like I didn't want to disrespect you as a, another person or human that we're walking in the same or walking past each other. And of course, I don't do that all day, every day. And now I know why too. As an adult, you're having a bad day. Right. right? You right. just you're too distracted. Well, you're in your own you're head. In your own you're head. making your own yeah. agenda and schedule yeah. for the day. Yeah. yeah. You got to get take care of business. Right. Yeah. Um, and so in those ways, you know, like I obviously know it's not, you're not going to smile at everybody you see. Um, but yeah, it's a good practice I think to be, okay. So back to this. So they did the, um, they test and they, um, surveyed all these people and they said, yeah, they were happier after the train than they were when they got on because they, then what they did is they did it secretly. They asked people, they, then they surveyed the people that they talked to. Okay. After, because the people were just victims. They didn't know what they were yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. They surveyed them. They said, how happy are you? And then they measured from other train. They did it. 
to where they found okay. out that the people who were talked to were also happier. Right. They right. said, sometimes we're afraid and we're scared. Oh, they're not, they're going to judge me. They don't want to talk. They don't want to talk. And even the people who say they don't want to talk do in fact yes. want to, they are yes. happier. They just don't know it. Yep. Yep. They just don't know they it. They, they actually know. have said that their train ride was more productive and was a more positive experience when the person engaged them in conversation. Yeah. And they've even noticed it with just a smile and a, yep. anything like that. Yep. Um, so, but it, again, we, they don't, we don't go out of our way to do, to know that we don't go, Oh, so I'm going to be happy today. Is that, what, what's the title of this, that, of this a study. better wanting a better wanting yeah okay yep um and so yeah i just thought that was really crazy that again we don't we get on a bus and we go i'm gonna have some quiet time i really want to get this work done. Right. i really want to read i really want to and yeah. sure but, there's we do but is that making you intrinsically happier is that a, a, no. an experience a conversation no it's not no no that so, is that i like it i like um, it another thing is people who value time over money I yeah. thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, and my husband and I both are in agreement. I mean, we really value time yes. a lot more than we yes. would value a higher paycheck. Yes. Um, because we know that like money doesn't buy the memories. It can, right? right? You can go right. on those vacations. You can experience certain things. But truly day to day, you, you know, it, it, time matters more. Yep. Um, and so there are a lot of evidence showing that um, – it looks like, I wrote this statistic down, 69% of people actually value money over time. That's not a that's high what percentage. They say. Well, that's, yeah, they, they, they will work Maybe those three jobs and miss out on certain know. things. No, I think people, people. You think they do? Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, like, should they? Studies have shown, no, they should not. Oh, <laughs> they should value. They not should us. Value. We're not judging you. No, you no, no, no. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, but their intuition is value. Yes. Their intuition is oh, more money means freedom. More money means right. this. More money means that. And, it, and absolutely it can. And it all depends on people's experiences. Yeah. How they were, how they were raised, yeah. where they were raised, all their demographic. I mean, a billion things go into people's yep. ideas yep. about time and money. Absolutely. I mean, that is so I think that's personal. why you just want to try to find that balance and you're constantly finding the balance of work life balance and right. money and yeah right yeah it's very hard it's very hard um yeah to do that so yeah anyway that was just yeah valuing valuing time over money I like it um then last thing was mind control which sounds so crazy but that's how they presented it um we have wandering minds we sure do right mm -hmm. Um, the, let me see if I can find the statistic. Uh, it said 47% of the time we're not thinking about things in the here and now, but rather the past and the future or what did you just fantasy say? Lab. My mind was, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> but for a second ago, my mind did wander <laughs> while you were talking. Right, did it? And then I went, uh oh. <laughs> I don't think I remember. Happens. I don't, I, what did so, she say? Like, I my okay. mind did want. Now I really want to read this right because it was okay. really cool. I'm really focusing. This is the neuroscience part of the talk. Brain, the, all our brains have different parts to them, right? Yes. And certain parts light up when you're talking about certain things. Yes. So your brain has a de it's basically they call it a default network. Yes. And that's where our minds go. It goes to a default, default yes. network, and it just thinks. Yes. And it is probably the fastest auto. part of our brain. Isn't it, auto? it is so like fast. Like an autopilot. It's situation? like it like goes on autopilot, okay. and it's so fast. From when, like, let's say you're in flow, right? Yeah. And you're like, and then it's not. You're focused. You're challenged, and you're Happy. using your skill, yeah. and you're all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, boom! What am I eating for dinner? Okay, I'm not going to eat that. Okay. Oh yeah, I had to make this phone call. Oh yeah, and you're just like all over the place. Mm, you're not okay. being. You're not focused. And yeah, almost fifty percent of the time, our brains are. In the, I mean, that's. I guess that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. Um, so when your brain is not in focus on something, the networks start talking to each other. The they networks become, start talking to yeah, each other. So like the default network, they they say is when you go in default mode. They noticed this by accident, actually, because they were studying something else in the brain, okay. and they were, like, scanning it. Wow. And they were noticing that certain parts were lighting up when you were talking about things, like facial recognition or memories or word recognition and stuff. Okay. They were studying what those parts were. But then, right when they brought them out of that thought process, then they were like, 
what, what are those parts that light up? What are those? Wow. And that's where they came up with this default network. They all just, they, there's a bunch of them that start talking to each other. Um, and so, uh, what the psychologists are saying is that the longer we stay out of that default mode, okay. the happier we are. Mm, yeah. Because then we're not making up scenarios. We're not getting ourselves so, anxious about so things. So when we say, oh, I just want to chill. I just don't want to think about something. I just want something no brainer. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. I just, yeah. I just want to shut my mind off. I just want to really watch not Netflix. We're really not happier. Scroll through my phone. No. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Because it serves no purpose exactly, whatsoever. Exactly. It's not feeding. But if you ask me, what would you rather do? Uh-huh. Would you rather go out into the garden and plant a flower? Or would you rather sit on your couch? I'm going to say I would rather sit on my couch, right? Instead well, not of, everybody. But, but I, I know what you people, mean. people, we desire that <gasps> relaxing yes, 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 on yes. the beach. Well, because you know. we've also been indoctrinated into that. I think that so, That we have been pushed into... Yep the luxury of your life is to be able to relax, yeah. to not have to worry about anything, to be at leisure all the time, to have all of your wants and needs. Do you know, you know, we are, that's celebrated. I know. No, that, it absolutely ooh, is. It's it absolutely Friday. Is. Mm-hmm. You get to be off work for the whole weekend and do nothing. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. That is pushed on us yeah. all the time. Yeah. Why isn't it pushed? Hey, well, maybe it is, I guess, in some like, REI outdoor commercials, you know, <laughs> go find a boulder and climb it this <laughs> yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I guess yeah. there's some of that, but I think the majority of societal society says, have a drink, relax. Yeah. Yeah. Find your most comfortable couch, mm-hmm. grab a blanket, mm-hmm. grab that remote, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. a care in the world. The snuggies, the recliners. Oh, yeah, think stuff. about yeah. that mm-hmm. whole industry to make yeah. you as comfortable and numb mm-hmm. And brainless and feed, feed, feed. You feed oh. on all this stuff. We're gonna. We can't get into that. Oh, isn't but, that yeah. something? Yeah. But so I've even noticed that I um like when I would go on trips. My favorite part of when I would travel was uh just like walking around a new city. Yeah. Because that's challenging to me. Right. Right. So I need to figure but out. But you the map, also have the skill. Out. But I have the skill to do it. Mm-hmm, you I do. L- I have. I'm really good at directions. I'm really good at like Maps. talking to people. <laughs> I can ask people things. I'm really good at um. Yeah, like all that. I'm really good at it. Yeah. Um, but it's because my brain is constantly moving the entire time. Right. I'm learning about a different culture, learning a different city yep. instead yep. of sitting on a beach. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah. so yeah. boring to me. I'm so sorry. I love- Why would you be sorry? No, that's it's great. Just, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. But it does nothing for me. Well, <laughs> like, and maybe when you're 52. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe you will. Yeah. Because- I wouldn't mind. No, a I'll still beach be hiking mountains. Day. No, I'll want to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But anyway, yeah. Um, so, how do we combat that? How do we combat that? Oh, yeah. What do we do? Meditation. Oh, you combat that by getting quiet. It's an icky word for me. I can't handle meditation at all. Why? What happens? What, why is that icky to you? If I, if my brain is turned, if my brain goes into default mode yes. automatically, which it does, but if it's, if it's there too long. Yes. And I'm, and I mean, what I mean by that is just quiet. Okay. No music, no conversation, um, no TV, mm-hmm. just me and cutting vegetables or me okay. driving a car. Okay. Me going to sleep. My brain is just so overloaded or oh. I don't have much control over it at all okay. that it can sometimes go to like some anxiety ridden oh. places. Okay. Um, okay. And that's just my own personal thing that I deal with is a quiet mind. So to me, meditation is really scary because I don't want to be quiet enough with my mind. But I know that if I practice meditation enough, I can stop those anxieties and I can stop that from happening. It's a training of your brain. So I know it's probably good for me. Same with exercising. I hate exercising, but I know it's good for me after. Right, right. I think I probably should start practice meditation. You should. Meditating. And there are a ton of resources and there's you. different kinds. So, um, so as I'm taking kinds. this class, I was, I'm listening to these lectures and I'm thinking if they tell me <gasps> to meditate <laughs> and I thought, and then I thought the only way I'm going to meditate is if they tell me, <laughs> to Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I have to have a certain person oh to motivate me. That's really funny. Okay. And then sure enough, meditation, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> it can be baby steps. 
You, yeah. know, you know that. You don't have to jump in to a 30-minute meditation session. So what okay. I really like is she kind of said there's three different. There's a oh. loving kindness meditation. Okay. There's breath meditation. And then there's a choiceless awareness, which choiceless that's like getting on a ro- roller coaster to me. That is sounding terrible to me. A is that just a hyper focus then? It's just like a focus on whatever thoughts come in your way and oh, appreciate them. Oh, and-, and then let them go. Well, that's what I always say. Oh my God. That sounds like literally like the worst thing that could happen. Okay. But that's what I say to you when you have a feeling. And I kind of learned that through yoga Yeah, is if you have a thought or a feeling, you don't have to marry that feeling or thought. I know. I don't know life. how to do that. You can just have a cup of tea with it. it see if it's something that needs to stay with you or uh-huh. if it's something you can have a cup of tea with and then send it away. So maybe meditation will help me with that. Well, I I'm, and I can that. help you with that because I've trained a little bit. The one time on that, you know, that's good. That's yeah. really good. The, the, I've, I've meditated a couple of times and the, the times that I, I did was when work was, I was working a different job at the time and it was so overwhelming physically and emotionally. And like, it was so draining that I, my heart rate would not mm. go down. Like it was so intense. You needed that breath. So med- yeah. Meditation. So what I did is I just went to YouTube and I, um, and it was, it was, um, a breath meditation, but it was also like, feel your feet. Feel your legs. Yes. Feel, those meditations awareness. are really good. We learn a lot of that in yoga. Yeah. A and just lot. noticing your own body because that's <laughs> the here and now. And I loved it. Cause then you were, and then you relaxed everything. Yeah. Remember how I said in one of our episodes earlier about yoga, about the significance of being heavy. Yeah. And just really feeling yeah. the weight of your body. And appreciating your body. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that you experienced a little bit of that. Yeah, I got to do that a couple times. But, and I loved it. But really, it. no guilt or pressure to meditate. I'm, I'm serious. Okay. Like, if you really, if it seems daunting, don't start with a 30 or 20. Start with a three minute. Go to a five minute. Then Even go to three a minutes seven. is like the longest three well, minutes. Well, but I know, yeah, but I'm yeah, just saying, yeah. train yourself. No, I th- don't no, I'm, yeah. make it so yeah. terrible that yeah. you aren't going to rediscover it again. No, and so. that's true. Another one is I liked is the loving kindness meditation yeah, is when- What's that? You kind of said that to me while you're on your yoga mat, you pray. Yeah. It's kind of the other, it's like praying. Oh. Um, but for people who don't pray- it's a loving kindness meditation is when you focus on somebody or focus on somebody else and you I say that lovingly meditate and you, I want good things for that okay. person. I hope they're doing well. You kind of like the good vibes okay. are like thinking good thoughts. I feel like that's kind of what that is. So I do that a lot in my yoga classes that I teach. Okay. I will say, um, you know, think about somebody, you know, set your intention on your class. Yeah. Uh, I teach a secular yoga class, so it's not a, a a Christ-based uh, yoga class where I can say, let's do a prayer or yeah. uh, anything like that. So I'll say sometimes maybe set your intention or your purpose for your class on somebody that you wish was here. You know, oh, like maybe somebody like that. that you really wish would be at yoga with you yeah. or maybe someone who can't be at yoga with you because they're disabled or they just can't be there. So that's a loving kindness or, or I will say, think about yeah. some, a friendship. I'll talk a lot about maybe meditate or think about a friendship that brings you a lot of joy and happiness. So yeah. Yeah, I do a little bit of that. I like that. Yeah. I know. Um, the other thing is yeah. that it does actually, um, uh, where did I put it? Oh yeah, it does. It builds brain tissue over eight weeks. They said, yeah, no, they'll notice a difference in your brain. Yeah, after our eight brain weeks is very, very pliable. So mm-hmm. um, that just reminded me again of like same with exercising. It's you're exercising your brain. Sometimes when we're in plank in my yoga class and plank gets to be really hard, I'll say, um, think about the people that can't do plank. Mm-hmm. Plank for the people who can't do plank. <laughs> Hold your plank longer and think about that person. And so do double for the person who yeah. can't. Yeah. I don't know. It gets your gets yourself out of your own head then. It oh, absolutely. Your, you're not absolutely. thinking about your own suffering. No, <laughs> no. Plank. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Whatever. Um, uh, the other thing they talked about are then the healthy practices. So we talked about the better wanting, which is seek kindness, seek social connection, um, value time over money as much as possible. Okay. And then practice controlling your mind and your wandering mind, your wandering thoughts. Be aware of your wandering thoughts. Yes. Be aware of that and how you can fix that. So there's certain healthy practices and there's two mainly, and they're going to sound just about as Good. cheesy I know what they are. as you can possibly get. Okay. And 
I, yeah. Okay. Number one, exercise. <laughs> no, it's not cheesy at all. It's I know not it's cheesy. not. It's the truth. No, it's just the hardcore truth. Yep. That is science. Absolutely. It shows to be more Move helpful than antidepressants to help yes. your cognitive performance over time. Much more than an antidepressant. Would. Absolutely. Yep. Hundred percent. Yep. God made and longer natural. Right? Absolutely. Um, and then sleep. Dang. Right. Yes. Sleep. I, I wish I could be as passionate about agreeing with the sleep as I am about the exercise. It has. Co- it helps oh. you with cognitive performance. Improves your mood. Uh, no. Yeah. I know. You're less irritable. Sleep. It helps your performance over time with I know. everything. It's a miracle reset. It's um, a miracle. This healing. I wrote this down. One night of bad sleep can make you hungrier, yes. more accident prone, crabbier, more likely to get sick. You lose brain tissue. You have memory problems, and you're more emotional after one night. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? No, it's. I true. mean, I know. I do. I I recognize it myself. Yeah. The first day I didn't get enough sleep. And some I am of us a grouch. Sleep like a mosquito. Yeah. I, I know it's hard. My husband is the same way. I know. He can't sleep at all. I, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, chronic sleep deprivation, um, meaning like five hours of sleep. Um, decrease <laughs> for the gentleman is decreased sperm count, increased uh, early death, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, and even quadrupling your risk for stroke. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And Pretty terrible. Pretty scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and how so, do we get more sleep? Did that's a different study? podcast. I have no idea. Okay. Super. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sleep more. I don't know how to get that. Figure that out. Sleep okay. more. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else on this amazing study? I just, I want, I, I think the main thing, I mean, pick to me, I would pick one of those and then focus on those for a week or okay. a day. Like how okay. can I find more happiness in being more kind or noticing someone's kindness, right? Sometimes okay. we're just like, we don't have time. We can open the door for someone. A simple smile is I'm good at that can. because we get a lot of um, Amazon packages. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> I had a really funny, <laughs> sometimes I'm too friendly and I'm very happy when someone comes to the house. Um, so I'll be overly friendly to the UPS driver and we have a new UPS driver. We have a really weird farmhouse circle driveway and usually our trucks that come in just come in a little bit into the driveway, and then they back out. Well, this new UPS driver commits to our driveway. So he'll come all the way in and do the whole circle of the driveway. That's funny. And we have a few cars at our house. That's funny. So the other day he came up to the counter, and I, or up to the counter, up to my door. I met him at the deck, and I go, way to commit to our driveway. Like, not everybody <laughs> braves our big circle driveway. You get this big truck in here. I made the weirdest. And he was like, well, yeah, I'm driving the big truck. Why, why wouldn't I commit to it? We just had this really funny exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were kind to each other. Um, and I think we made each other's hour, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll oftentimes offer my driver's water, Mm-hmm. My, my FedEx girl, I'm always, you know, do you want a bottle of water? Are you good? Do you need anything? Yeah. Something simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I don't do enough drive throughs but I have enough trucks coming to my house. Oh. I have to tell this quick story, oh, though, I'm because sorry. Abby's not here to tell it. So okay. I'm going to tell it on behalf of Abby because okay. she reminded me of the story. Okay. Um, but we were in college at the time. So 19, I think we were 19. And we went to Target, um, oh, yeah. which is our happy place. And, um, Abby's similar to that. We're just very open and talkative. Most of my friends are Calvin's that way. We're very open and just, we want to enjoy the world with everybody and (laughs) invite everybody into our world. And, um, so we asked this, uh, target cashier, like, how's your day? And she was just having a bad day and she just kind of opened up to us. She was maybe our age and we were like, oh my gosh, what can we do for her? And, and she goes, and I think she even said to us, I just wish I could just drink, get a cup of coffee or something. I, don't, I didn't get a break today or whatever it was. And Abby and I are looking at each other like, what do we do? What do we do? And I said, well, can you drink coffee? Like, we'll go get you one. No, I can't drink it while I'm at work and all this stuff. And, and so we left her and we we're like, this is such a bummer. She's so bummed. We know what it's like to have a bummer day at work. And we, we both worked three jobs, you know, yeah. ever since we moved out of our house. Yeah. And, um, 
So we thought, well, let's just get our Target gift or a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> and we gave, what, a $5 so Starbucks smart. gift card? And so we ran smart. up to her and we gave it to her. And I did not remember this. Abby reminded me of this the other day. And she, Abby goes, she was shocked. I, I bet mean, it's she never was happened to her before. Shocked. And to us, we were like, well, of course we're going to give you a Starbucks gift card. <laughs> like, what do you mean? And, um, and then I was like, Abby, this is such a sweet story. I don't even remember doing that. And she said, she said, how much do you want to bet we would have remembered that we got ourselves Starbucks that day? That you wouldn't have remembered it. We wouldn't. No, of course not. We wouldn't no. have remembered it. No. Um, but, and then we, we definitely wouldn't have gone back to our apartment and been so excited and happy that we made somebody's day. Right. She said, we were so excited that we had done that for that person. Oh, and I was like, that's so, so cool. I hardly remember doing it, but, um, but she said we wouldn't be talking about it eight years later. We definitely no. wouldn't be mm -mm. if we had no. bought ourselves Starbucks. Yep. So that's that miss wanting. We miss, yeah. Yeah. And so we had gone out, you know, anyway, that was just, I had to I tell love that story. It. Abby wanted me to story. tell that story. It's a great story. Um, so yeah. So now we can talk about our buzz questions really quick oh, because we, we have, have more buzz questions. We have so many more buzz questions. Oh my gosh. I want to know you Stop. deeper. <laughs> Stop and the it. only way to know that is through our buzz questions. The buzz questions are getting scary now that we've gone so many episodes in. It's just I'm, funny now, though. I, I think. hope it's funny. I'm I'm afraid they're not going to be funny. What's the last book you read? <laughs> oh, the whole book or the last book I touched? Um, because I don't know if I can tell you the last book I completed from beginning. I actually have a hard time completing books. I have one book that I have like five pages in left. In this world, yeah. my yeah. brain has not been trained very well. It's, I've lost more. a lot of reading abilities yeah. same, same. to hold my attention same. to yeah. read chapter after chapter. I used to be a big reader. Yeah. I think a lot of us can say yeah. that. Now we take in information teeny tiny. So the last book Do that you think I, it's smartphones? Well, of course it is. Yeah. It's all phones issues yeah. absolutely positive it's of course i get everything i need right now right. in tiny little nuggets yeah i have no reason to challenge my brain to relax enough did you have you tried what i tried with turning off your apps at all turning off your phone no, at i'm not time? gonna do that oh, no um, okay but thanks for that <laughs> i have no interest it in kind that. of helps train your brain a little bit i don't bit. have the same kind of problem that you do okay. with apps um, other people might the last book uh, that i read from beginning to to end i I can't tell you, but I'm, I have several on my, in my, in my office. What was your, can you think of a favorite book that you read or something that like you, that the first book that you think of that really like made a difference in your life? Redeeming Love. Oh, okay. I haven't read that. I love that book so much. Okay. And all of a sudden I can't remember the author. Um, mm, almost I do. It's a Christian. Francine Fra yeah. Rivers, Francine right? Rivers. Yeah. Redeeming Love. Um, you, um, I, I loved it. You think it, it was amazing. I think I read it twice and I, I even encouraged my husband to read it. It's not just a girl book. Okay. It, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a book? I just, well, like I said, there's five pages. It's like, I can't, I don't know why I can't finish the five pages. It's idiot by Laura oh. Cleary. <laughs> um, I highly, <laughs> okay highly suggest reading that book okay um laura cleary is the youtube personality um comedian and she is kind of an autobiography a little bit um it gives a first hand like i mean obviously it's her <laughs> so you can't get much better than that um window into um somebody who wants wanted to be an actress who moved to la mm. to do that also struggles with addiction and what that looks like because I think a lot of people who don't they view addiction really yeah if you haven't been touched by it or have experienced it no, we don't know. you don't know so you got to learn something different about a little bit I feel like though I I've known quite a bit about addiction though just from growing up yeah 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 um so I've had a very like open and sensitive heart toward that right already so then reading this, even from another perspective, which is just a young woman, not much older than I am, um, it was really, really educational, so good, so powerful. Right. And she talked about how she overcame addiction and how she found success in her life. 
um, which she kind of uses a little bit of these things. Um, Interesting. And she talks about the law of attraction a lot of the time. Just changing your mindset can change your life. Okay. So, Let's buzz this up. Oh, sorry. Because buzz questions supposed to be fast. I just really love this book, and I, I think know. it's a good book. I think everyone should read it. So it's Idiot by Laura really Clary. Time. What is this? I made the heart. Oh, I love. Thanks. Are you a clean or messy person? Both. 100% equally 50% clean. 50% messy. No. I'm tidy and dirty. <laughs> You're tidy and dirty? I'm the opposite. You're tidy and I dirty? Like, I like things to be organized and neat, but I don't clean up crumbs very fast. That's so funny. That's the I don't opposite put, of me. Like, if I take the bread tie off the loaf of bread, I'll leave the bread tie on the counter forever. I'll never throw that bread tie. Okay. I won't put it back on the loaf. And I'll never throw it in the garbage. Okay. Um, but I like piles to be very, very neat. I like to not have clutter. Yeah. But I'm not, but I don't scrub my kitchen sink every day. So I'm tidy and dirty. That's so funny. <laughs> I feel like I'm a I'm little. I'm really embarrassed. No, I think I, I consider myself pretty clean. Like I want my floors to be clean. Okay. I like when my bathroom is clean. Okay, but I'm, but ready, I'm, I'm ready to label you. Messy. You are the messiest person I am I've so ever known messy. in my life. Like I cannot keep a straight pile. No. Everything is all over the place. She's always been messy. Always, always, like I always. Can't. It, it, but here's the thing about the pile, okay? If it's in a pile, you can't see it. You Oof. have to go through the pile to find it. I have a little panic. Your, your piles are, your mess does. <laughs> I know. I don't know it's why. It's bad. Your messes are, are tough for me. Um, oh, well. No. Oh, well. You don't well. have to live with me anymore. Um, but no, I'm very messy. But, <laughs> but, but I feel like clean. I'm clean. Right. I, f I feel like I'm, ve like I, my kitchen, if it's like. I'm so embarrassed. Okay. Go on to the next why question. Why are you embarrassed? Because I'm admitting that I'm. Oh, you're very fine. Clean. Well, your house isn't like a. Take a sty. Your house no, is beautifully no, clean. No, it is. So you yes, be, yes. No, I. Clean it just up takes spills. extra work to. Yeah, it's just an extra thing. It's right. Just, I just mean naturally. What comes naturally. after you? Naturally, fifty fifty. Um, oh, okay. what is your favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie is Jerry Maguire. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. That's just my favorite movie. And then my second favorite movie is um. Knocked up. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that movie. Um. And then Bridesmaids. Oh. I have no depth about me whatsoever no, those are good in movies. movies. No, it's not Sh Shawshank Redemption. It's not Shawshank Redemption. Um, anything serious at well, all. Well, same with mine. I, I also just don't three. like movies anymore. Yeah, mine aren't. Like, but Jerry Maguire, I could watch. I'll never get sick of watching that movie. Yeah. Mm, it's a great movie. Yeah. Mm. Good. Okay, thanks. What's your favorite movie? Oh, I have top three as well, actually. Okay, I know that you mentioned top three. Yeah. Uh, Pride and Prejudice is number yes. one. I could watch that every single. Yeah. Why do you roll your eyes at that? I didn't roll my, did I? I rolled my <laughs> eyes? You literally went, yes. Oh, I, well, because I know it is. Oh. And I would never true. watch it. Oh. I think maybe that's oh, why okay, I rolled okay. my so eyes. you're not like judging me for it. You're just like, oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sure I'm judging you for it because oh. I think it's. It's a period piece. I hate period movies. Oh, that's right. That's so, right. And I okay. think it's funny that you're my daughter and you love oh. Pride and Prejudice so much and I will never watch it. I think, Have you really never seen it? Ugh, not as much as I could help it. Oh my it. God, the music. Mm. The, oh, so good. Okay. Yeah, they're in costumes. Okay, go on. You didn't want to be? Nope. That? Nope. You didn't want to wear big dresses? Nope. Well, anyway. Well, maybe, but no. I want to oh, wear big dresses now. And the love story. And she, Move on to oh number my two. Gosh, it's Pride right. and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is number one. And then what's tied for number two, so top three, would be um, The Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I knew that. Which is the American Revolution. Like, you can't get better than the American Revolution. Like, no, you can't. You can't get better than that. Okay? okay. That's, like, literally, like. The, I know. The Patriot. The birth of our nation. The greatest nation in the whole world. <laughs> and Heath Ledger's in it. Okay. Such a good movie. And you cry every time. You cry every time. Okay. And their third? Oh, it's so good. Mel Gibson is just brilliant. Go in on it. with your third. Step Brothers. <laughs> Step Brothers? Yes. <laughs> like the most garbage movie you can pick. It's such garbage. <laughs> it's so funny. It's my favorite terrible. movie. It's my favorite movie. Oh my gosh. It makes me laugh every time. Oh, you quote that. Oh, my. I know the entire movie. Oh I know every line. One time I was 
hanging out with my friend and in high school and Mac, he and I quoted the entire movie back to one another. Like we just the whole movie. Well, we just kept sending each other quotes through like the entire oh movie, just my back and forth and gosh, back and forth. You guys, it's the best. It's the funniest. Okay. It's to me, it makes me laugh more than any other movie oh ever. Oh my gosh. Planet, okay. So. Go. <laughs> if I'm ever in a bad mood, Michael knows just to s- silently put in Star Brothers. <laughs> we have the DVD of it, you know? Oh my gosh. And he'll just, and then I'll be like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if we even have time for that anymore. But okay. Do yes. you have another buzz question? No, that's oh, it for the awesome, buzz questions. Yes. Okay, thanks. This yes. is fun. Thank you. Do for- we have a takeaway for our listeners? For our podcast? Well, you had already said it about, you know, picking one of these topics. And I, I think finding meditation. Okay. I think that anybody who hasn't dabbled in meditation yet, find your flavor of meditation. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Research a little bit about yep. that. Ask okay. people about it. Ask okay. people that you trust. You know, well, and you should share some of that stuff too. I will like sometime. we can talk about that yeah. a little but bit on our, people on our that Instagram. Trust absolutely, that are like minded because that could go all sorts of sideways and into oh, places sure, sure, maybe sure. you don't want to go mm-hmm. with meditation. So um, get wise counsel. Yep. Um, about meditation. Okay. Um, and make that a good uh, challenge for you t- uh, for uh, a happier life and a healthier brain. Thanks, Madison. Can I say mine? Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Am I allowed? Yes. Um, I think uh, changing your mindset. Okay. Not only, yeah, kindness and social comparison or social connection and stuff, but I think it's important to find where in your life you can push yourself a little bit more. Okay. And maybe where you want to. Don't push yourself where you maybe don't want to because that's just not fun. But maybe at a place where you're at a crossroads and you think, I can't really go any further here. Okay. Maybe I need to learn a little bit more about something and it's uncomfortable. I think definitely go for that. Okay. Um, change your mindset up a little bit. Meet your skill. Have your skill meet your challenge. Okay. Um, and just know you can do it. Okay. Like don't put yourself yeah, in a box. Decide that you can. Yep. Don't but have that fixed mindset that you can't. Practice have a that growth, growth mindset. mindset. Yep, absolutely. I love it. Okay, well, thank Thanks. you so much for listening. Thank you, Madison. See ya. See ya.